To begin your zipper pouch, you will begin by cutting two 12 by 12 inch pieces of cotton woven fabric. First, you'll need to make sure that the fabric is on grain. The first way that you can check doing this is by clipping and ripping. However, this will cause your fabric to grow in one direction. So I suggest clipping, spreading the fibers apart so that you can grab one of the yarns and then slowly start to tug on that yarn and it will give you a guideline. Once the line breaks, you can clip the scissors to that point and then splay out the fabric again once again, pulling one of the yarns and continue to do this to make sure that you have as close to a perfect 12 by 12 inch square as possible on the grain. After you've completed doing this, you can make sure that you're on grain by measuring twice. Make sure that you have the 12 by 12 inch pieces. And you can also fold them in half into a triangle to make sure that they are square. Don't obsess over this or take too long, but do try to practice cutting on grain and making sure that your fabric is square. Next, you'll need to prepare your zipper. If you selected a zipper that has teeth or a zipper that is coil, you will first need to prep it. Any zipper needs to be at least 13 inches long, so a little bit longer than the length of your square. It can be much longer, but you don't want it to be any shorter. If you're using a coil zipper, especially one that is coming off of the tape as you would in the studio, you're going to cut off one of the ends about a quarter of an inch and then you will slide the zipper pull onto the tape one side at a time and then using your hands to tug both ends of the zipper you will make sure that the pull is on. Now it's really important that you do this next step so that you don't accidentally slide the zipper head all the way off of the tape and have to reinsert it. So you are going to tie a knot with your fingers and there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. One way is by rolling it between your fingers and pulling it. The other way is by making a loop and then threading the tail of the loop through it three times and then pulling a knot. Once you have that knot, you're going to clip the thread down to 1 8 of an inch, and then you're going to create a bar tack at the top and potentially the bottom also of your zipper tape. Do this about a half inch away from the bottom, and then straddling the coil or the teeth of your zipper, you're going to go through about six times to, in the same place to create a secure tack. This way your zipper will not pull off of the tape. Once you're done going through this about six times, you're going to tie a knot, taking a little bitty bite of thread wrapping, little bitty bite of tape, wrapping the thread around the needle and then pulling that tight. Clip your thread, and then you can either put a safety pin on the other end or you can complete the next side with another bar tack. This bag is lined, so make sure that the piece that you would like to be on the technical face, the public side, the outside of your pouch, is face up with the right side of the fabric facing you. And then you're going to line up the zipper tape, the right side of the zipper tape on the edge, and then face down, or with the right sides kissing, you are going to match up all three pieces. So just the side of the zipper tape in between both of your fabrics. Then you're going to do three perpendicular pins, making sure that the top and the bottom are pinned first and then the middle. You may have to tug on your fabric as you start sewing, especially if your fabrics are slightly different, they'll tend to pull at different rates. At the sewing machine, you're going to begin and end with a back stitch. Line up the edge of the presser foot, and if you, have, if you don't have one of these narrow split feet, you can use a zipper foot that is all the way over in the left position. And then once you get to the end, you're going to go ahead and backstitch and then cut the threads as close to the backstitch as possible, making sure that you're only cutting the threads. At the iron, you can open up your bag and press all of the fabric away from the zipper tape that you just sewed, making sure that you don't keep the iron on too long as to melt the coils or the teeth. Give it another good press, and now we're going to lay it back out. 
So with the right side up, you're going to scooch over that zipper tape and fold both of the pieces in half, just like this. Now you're going to pin once again, and all we're doing is sandwiching the three layers again. It's just in a little bit of a variation since the tape is connecting, the zipper tape is connecting everything. But to make sure that you're pinning at the top and bottom so that those tops and bottoms are lining up just right and also in the middle. At the sewing machine, you're going to begin and end once again with a backstitch, removing the pins as you go. Make sure that you're butting up the presser foot as close to the teeth as possible, but make sure that it's not so close that you can't unzip or zip your bag. End with a backstitch, remove your pins, and make sure that you're not having to sew over the zipper. That's why we uh, laid it out so that it could be a little bit longer. Once you do that, you're going to turn it right side out, unzip it as far as you can without the zipper tape coming off, and then you're going to press the bag pieces so that they are away from the zipper. This will make it so that you don't accidentally zip fabric when you are zipping and unzipping your pouch. The next step that we're going to be do, doing is top stitching. At the sewing machine, you are going to go approximately 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of the fabric that is lined up with the zipper tape and you're going to begin and end with a back stitch and top stitch the lining, the outer fabric, all to the zipper tape. Again we're doing this so that you do not accidentally zip the fabric and it will keep everything in place. After you've done the first side, make sure that you clip the threads as close to the back stitch as possible on the top and the bottom. And then you are going to move over to the second side. Continue on using 1 16th or 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. You even can use a quarter inch of seam allowance if you, if you like the way that that top stitching looks and you can be specific with what color of thread that you use. It's really up to you and whatever kind of design you would like to use for your zipper pouch. Once again, you need to ensure that your zipper tape is secured either with a safety pin or a bar tack. And now we are going to line up the ends so that they are even. Measure the distance from side to side when the, the zipper pouch is laying flat, and then make sure that the center of the coil or the zipper tape is even and exactly in the middle. You're going to go ahead and pin this in place and note that you may have to wiggle it back and forth. Also it's really important to make sure that your bag is slightly unzipped so that you can uh, easily get in and out of the bag once we turn this right side out. Begin with a back stitch and then if you're using a coil zipper, you can stitch directly over that coil. If not, I'll show you what you need to do for a molded or metal zipper in the next step. Clip your threads as close to the back stitching on both sides, and then you're going to repeat this on the other side. Make sure that it's pre-pinned, and then if you have a metal or molded zipper, you're just gonna back stitch over the area and then hop over the teeth so that you don't break your machine needle. Clip your threads once again, and then you're going to go over to the serger. Make sure that you undo your safety pin and clip your zipper tape so that it's shorter. If you have metal or molded teeth, you'll need to pluck those with pliers. And then you're going to finish the raw edge either with a serge or with a zigzag. Do that on both sides. And next we're going to do boxed corners. So with the boxed corners, we're going to have an inch going from the top of the stitch line down to the seam allowance and then also an inch from side to side on either side of that stitch line. Once you have that, pin it in place and then you'll set it down and mark it with chalk to make sure that you know which line that you're stitching on. And you want to try to make sure that it's even so you've got an inch from either side and also an inch straight down. Beginning and ending with a back stitch, stitch over that line and that will create a boxed corner. Clip your threads, and then if you want, you're welcome to serge those edges, or you can just leave them as is. Make sure that you're flopping over the seam allowances on each side in the same direction. It doesn't matter, matter whether it's up or down. Just make sure that you're being consistent. 
Once again, after you've measured the inch to top to bottom and inch side to side for two inches total on that side, you are going to begin and end with a back stitch, clip your threads, and then you'll complete this on the other side. After you've done that, you can turn your bag right side out and you have completed your zipper pouch.